Crystal Thomas. And I'm Irma Mora. And this is Tiger Beat. Thank you all for watching. The government shutdown has been in effect for over 13 days now, and most people are wondering how it might affect them in their daily lives, aside from the numerous reports they hear about it in the news. Here are a few ways the government shutdown is affecting everyone, according to New York Daily News. Mail is still being delivered, and Medicare and Social Security benefits are still flowing, but there could be delays in processing new disability applications. Federal courts, which have been using fees and other funds to operate since the shutdown began, will likely have enough money to operate until around October 17th and possibly October 18th. National parks closed when the shutdown began, but the Obama administration said it would allow states to use their own money to reopen some of them. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission shut down in most of its operations, but resident inspectors will remain and any immediate safety or security matters will be handled. The Food and Drug Administration and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say they can handle recalls and high-risk foodborne outbreaks, but discovering them will be more difficult because many people who investigate outbreaks have been furloughed as a result of the shutdown. The National Transportation Safety Board is not investigating most transportation accidents, making an exception only if lives or property are in danger. Auto recalls and investigation of safety defects have been put on hold during the government shutdown. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is no longer screening products at ports of entry to prevent potentially dangerous runs from reaching store shelves. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and a recent study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that advanced cases of breast cancer in young women in the U.S. climbed an average of about 250 cases per year in the mid-1970s to more than 800 per year in 2009. Some studies suggest that the rise in the use of birth control pills over the past decade might be a factor because of the synthetic hormones, while other research points to a link between breast cancer and hormone replacement therapy. Some physicians say the news should give doctors and young women a new reason to take a closer look when it comes to diagnosing and recognizing symptoms and not waiting until it's too late. Diagnosing breast cancer can, and women under 40 can be more difficult at times. Their breast tissue is generally denser than the breast tissue an older woman, experts say. And in some cases, by the time a young woman feels a lump in her breast, the cancer is often advanced. Because breast cancer can strike at any age, women of all ages should be aware of the high risk factors for breast cancer, including a family history of breast cancer in a male or female close blood relative, a personal history of breast cancer, race, heavy alcohol use, smoking, very dense breasts, and obesity. Taking preventative steps to ensure you are healthy is always the right thing to do. The American Cancer Society recommends beginning at age 20, women get clinical breast exams at least every three years. And that's all for news. Stay tuned for a special Brunel update from Brunel's SGA President Jessica Anderson and sports news after that with Irma Mora. Hello, wonderful women of Brunel. My name is Jessica Anderson and I'm the president of the Student Government Association this year. First off, welcome back from fall break. I hope you all are fully re-energized and ready to jump back into the second half of this semester. We had the President's Cabinet open forum recently, and it was a success. We discussed laundry facilities with the President as well as library hours. As far as laundry facilities, we are waiting to hear back from our laundry machine provider about numbers and further amenities they will be willing to provide. Library hours are a continuing and growing concern amongst the student body, and we have heard your cries for change. Red wine hours are in discussion and they are gathering data before making any further changes. If you would like to see extended red wine computer lab hours, please vote with your feet. Go to the library and express your need for a quiet study facility. The library takes tallies on the hour of traffic in the library, so let's show them that we do use the library and go as often as you can. Food services has acted upon your requests for the old chicken strips back in the tea room, so get some if you haven't already. We have also heard that some people prefer the newer chicken strips, so now both types will be available upon request. We have some new officers to congratulate. The two new junior class senators are Haley Fowler and Megan Riles. Your new campus relations officer is Sarah Hubashi. Senior class vice president is Ariel Simmons. And last but not least, the new senior class treasurer is Gabrielle Stiegel. If you see them around, be sure to congratulate them. If you would like to contribute to your student government and get involved, everyone is encouraged and welcome to join a commission. If you are, in, if you are interested in joining a commission, please email us at sga.tiger.bernow.edu. 
It's that time of year again, and sister class games are being planned as we speak, so get excited for some friendly competition. The game will be held on November 14th, so be on the lookout for PR. I hope you all come out and play, as it truly is a blast. Have a great week, and as always, stay golden, ladies. Welcome back, and thanks for watching Tiger Beat. I'm Irma Mora. Let's see what the Golden Tigers have been up for this past week. In volleyball, the Golden Tigers defeated Dalton University and Talladega University. They fell against Mobile University, Faulkner University, and Spring Hills College last week. On Friday, October 11th, our Golden Tigers defeated Montreat College, but fell to Bryan College on Tuesday, October 15th. The volleyball team hosted the Dig Pink event against Emmanuel College. Here's the story. On October 15th, the Golden Tigers volleyball team got a lot of support from Bernal University students wearing pink in their Dig Pink event. Um, I'd say that they're probably going to miss a really great game and an opportunity to support breast cancer. But I mean, there are so many opportunities out there that I'm sure they could if they wanted to. But I think this is a really great cause. And I think it's unfortunate for anyone who couldn't come out to support it. In a close match against Emmanuel College, the Bernal University Golden Tigers fell with a score of three sets to two. The Golden Tigers took the first set 25 to 9, and then Emmanuel came back and took the second and third with 19 to 25 and 15 to 25. The Golden Tigers then came back with a 25-23 set win. The defining set was exciting, but unfortunately our Golden Tigers fell 11-15. I mean, I'm very encouraged because our team played really hard. I mean, that's all I ever asked of them is to play hard. And they played really hard, and, they, and uh, they're coming together. That's a really good team. They're one of the top three teams in our conference. And, uh, you know, we got a bunch of freshmen out there, and we got some young kids, and they're just learning how to play together. And, I'm just happy every day we're getting better. You know, I mean, wins and losses are really important, but at the same time, I, I just really love the way they fought, and that was the most important thing. Despite the loss, the Golden Tigers ask that the fans keep supporting them. Oh yeah, keep coming, please keep coming. I would like to thank everybody who came out to support them on their Dig Pink event, in which all the funds gathered during the event will be donated to breast cancer research. I think this was awesome, this is amazing, and I want to thank everyone for coming. Way to go, Golden Tigers. Don't forget to show your support tonight as the Golden Tigers face Southern Westland University at 7 here at the Tigers' Lair. And tomorrow as they go take on North Greenville and Clark Atlanta University. And on Tuesday, October 22nd, our Tigers will face Martin Methodist at 7 at the Tigers' Lair. In soccer, our Golden Tigers defeated Faulkner University 4-0 and Auburn University Montgomery 1-0 on our home coming weekend. Way to go Tigers! October 11th, the Tigers defeated Georgia Gwinnett College 2-1. Keep up the great work, ladies! Show your support for your Golden Tigers as they go to face Bruton Parker on their home turf tomorrow at 1. Our cross-country team came in first out of 9 on October 11th at the Point University Invitational. Way to go Tigers! Wish our Tigers good luck and show your support as they head for the Crimson Classic today. Our Swimming Tigers finished second out of five at the Converse Women's Invitational on October 12th. Way to go, Tigers! Let's show our support as they head to Birmingham Southern Relays tomorrow. Let's show our support for our new golf team as they head to Chick-fil-A Collegiate Invitational on Monday, October 21st and Tuesday, October 22nd. Good luck, Golden Tigers! That's all for Bernal Sports. Let's take a quick look at sports around the nation. Let's see how the Georgia teams did last week. In college football, the Georgia Bulldogs lost to the Missouri Tigers 41-26 last Saturday. The Bulldogs have a chance to regain their momentum against Vanderbilt tomorrow at noon. Georgia Tech had the same fate and lost against Brigham Young University 38-20. They will have the chance to take flight against Syracuse tomorrow at 12.30. In the NFL, the Atlanta Falcons play against Tampa Bay Buccaneers Sunday at 1. Well, that's all for the sports this week. I'm Irma Mora. Until next time. Thanks for watching Tiger Beat. Once again, I'm Crystal Thomas. And I'm Irma Mora. Have a great week, Tigers.